Hi, welcome to lecture number 22 of Ultimate Python course. Now you already know how to write the loops. Now we want to control the loops. How do I, how can I control the loop based on some condition, right? So that is what we are going to look in this lecture. Don't write the notes. It is there in the description and please watch my video at 2x speed. I will be generally slow. So what are the loop control statements? So when you want to manipulate the loops and if you want to change their behavior and flow, then you can use three things. One is break, other is continue, other is pass. Okay. So why is break used? Why is can pass used? Why is continue used? You see that. So what is the purpose of loop control statements? So basically it will manage the loop flow and behavior efficiently. Now, when are you going to use break is if you want to completely come out of a loop, then you are going to use the break. Okay. So if you want to completely come out of the loop, we'll use the break. Continue means it will stop executing the statement from where continue is. For example, you are writing, you are having a continue here and you have some statements and if this is the block. There are some statements above it. There are some statements below it inside a block. Now what we will continue do is continue will skip these instructions just for this iteration. And it will not come out of the loop. It will again go back and execute the loop from beginning. That is continue. Pass means sometimes what happens is we, we want some structure. We want a loop. And in that we want to write some code, but for now we don't have that code. We want to write it later. So pass is just a placeholder reminding you that we can, you have to write a code later. So it will not give you any syntax error, which means we are just writing to, going to write a pass, which means that I, I will write, I will replace it later. Okay. I don't have code now. I will write the code later. Then you can use pass. It will not give you any syntax error. So basically break and continue are the main things which will control the loop and pass is just a placeholder which will say that which uh, actually means that I will write the code later. Now let's see about break. So where is break useful? So break is useful if you want to exit a loop permanently on meeting some condition. I will take an example and explain you. We have already seen this break. We have already seen earlier, right? So for i in the range of 10, which means 0 to 9, when i equal to 5 break, then what happens? For 0, it will execute. For 1, it will execute. 2, it will execute. 3, it will execute. 4, it will execute. But when i equal to 5 is met, then it will break, which means it will not print anything for further. It will come out of the loop. So when you put a break, it will come out of the loop and it will go to the next statement after the loop. Okay. So it will not go back into the loop. Now in while also you can put a break, but you have to be careful in while. Sometimes you may get into infinite loop in while when you put a break statement. Right. So what I mean by this is, let us say, Oh, okay, so this is not for while it is okay for continue. I'm talking about for while it will act the same in while loop also when we actually uh, write the break statement, it will break from the loop. Okay, so I've talked I was talking about continue. Okay, so now for i i equal to 0 i less than 10 which means 0 to 9. If you are printing and if you write like this, if i equal to 5, break, print i. If i equal to 5, break, print i. If you write like this, then what happens is, then what happens is, for i equal to 0, it will execute. For i equal to 1, it will execute. For i equal to 2, it will execute. For i equal to 3, it will execute. For i equal to 4, it will execute. But when i is equal to 5 is met, it will break, which means it will come out of the loop and it will execute the line after the loop, right? With while, you have to be careful when you use continue. Break works the same, just like the for loop. Now it is important. Continue is very important and using it, you should be very, very careful. 
okay what is the purpose of continuous it will skip the rest of the current loop and moves to the next iteration okay i will I'll explain you with an example so continue means you will not come out of the loop you will be in the loop but you will not execute the next instructions in that particular iteration you will go to the next iteration right right so i will explain you with an example see this for i in the range of 10 which means 0 to 9 when i equal to 5 we are saying continue then what happens is whenever i equal to 5 is hit the statements after that which means this statement will not get executed but then after continue it will again go back to the for loop and it will go to the next iteration so if you see it 0 is printed 1 is printed 2 is printed 3 is printed 4 is printed but for i equal to 5 you are seeing continue which means 5 will not be printed but then it will again go back and iterate in the through the next iteration in the for loop that is why 6 is printed 7 is printed 8 is printed 9 is printed so 5 is missing here why 5 is missing because you have put a continue which will skip the lines after the continue only for that iteration and for the next iteration onwards it is going to it is going to uh, execute the next iteration onwards okay so using continue in while is a very difficult thing i mean you have to be very careful it may lead to an infinite loop it may lead to an infinite loop if you don't place the incrementing condition cautiously what does that mean what does that mean uh, i'll take an example and explain you see this see this example while i equal to zero while sorry i equal to 0 while i is less than or equal less than 10 when i equal to 5 you are asking to continue right so what happens is 0 will be printed 1 will be printed 2 will be printed 3 will be printed 4 will be printed okay but when i happens to be 5 then continue is done which means these two statements will not be executed it will directly go back to the while loop now what is the value of i i equal to 5 only because this increment has not happened now again it will come inside again the value of i equal to 5 is there so again it will do the continue again it will go to, go to the next iteration in the next iteration also the value of i is 5 so i the value of i is not incremented the value of i is always 5 therefore this will get into infinite loop the reason is this increment statement is kept after the continue and it is not getting executed because of which the re value remains the same value is always fine okay so what should you understand from this is whenever you have an increment statement you have to put it before the continue before the continue otherwise otherwise you may get into infinite loop now let's see how to fix it so if you write like this for i is less than or equal to 10 i equal to i plus 1 is kept before the continue then what happens is initially i is equal to 0 then it will be incremented by 1 which means now the value of i is 1 so it will be printed right 2 will be printed 3 will be printed 4 will be printed when 5 comes 5 comes it will skip it will it has continue therefore it will skip the value it will skip this print so printing 5 is skipped printing 5 is script now again it will go back now what is the value of i the value of i is 5 now when it comes here the value of i is made 6 and it is the continue is not hit therefore 6 will be printed then 7 8 9 10 so which means you have to be very careful about the positioning of the increment statement when you are talking about continue in while okay so <clears throat> this will not happen for for loop why because in the for loop that increment or decrement statement is there inside the for it is not inside the body it is not after the continue right that is why it is different now let us see 
how break and continue are different. So, for example, for i in the range of 10, which means 0 to 9, if I say for i equal to 5 break, then what happens is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 will be executed. Whenever i becomes 5, then the entire loop is broken. Entire loop is broken, right? Now, for i in the range 10, for i in the range 10, i equal to 5 continue if you put, then what happens is whenever i value becomes 5, this print statement will not be executed. Therefore, 5 will not be printed. But then all the other numbers will get printed. See this 0 to 9, all the numbers are printed, but 5 is not printed. 5 is not printed. Okay. Now coming to pass, pass is nothing. Pass means if you have to have a structure, for example, if you have to have a for loop in your uh, code, and then only some part of the code is available or not the entire part is not available. You can write a pass. Pass is nothing but a placeholder. Later you are going to replace it. See, generally, generally, uh, whenever you don't know what code to write currently, but you want the rest of the program to execute, and you have to remember that there is a for loop in a there is a for loop that has to be kept there then you write pass so pass is just a placeholder later you are going to replace it with the code that you want okay so basically if you want to compare all of them so break means you will come out of the loop continue means you will skip one iteration you will go to the next iteration pass means it is just a placeholder you can use this you can write the uh, code later and some part of the code is already present or there may not be any code also you can directly write pass in this example some part of the code is already available other part is not available now we want to write it later in that case you are going to use pass okay okay so guys please do comment subscribe and like it takes hell a lot of time and effort to create this course a little encouragement from your side will be very worthy okay thank you if you want to take my gate classes, we go to the website ravindrababuravala.in and you are going to see all my gate classes available there. Okay. So coming to the classes, they are all recorded. Why am I doing recorded? Why am I not doing live classes is I have thousands of students registering for my courses every year. But then if I conduct a live class, only 20 or 30 people will be there. 20 or 30, that's it. Maximum is 40 I had. The reason is live classes are little bit wasting your time. See, you cannot watch a live class at 2x speed. You have to watch at the pace at which I teach. Generally, I will be very, very slow while teaching. So if you can go through the live classes, you can watch them at 2x speed and you can complete the syllabus very fast. 400 plus hours content is there for gate. And if you are going to watch them at normal pace, it will take 400 hours. But if you watch it at 2x speed, it will take just 200 hours, right? So if you want any of my gate classes, gate computer science or gate DA, the price is just 10,000 rupees. It is very, very reasonable for the kind of quality we provide. We have test series, we have doubt sessions, we have videos, we have lecture notes for everything. Even you don't have to write any lecture notes. I will provide you lecture notes for every subject. You just have to sit back, watch the videos at 2x speed and revise the notes. Short notes will be provided, long notes will be provided, formulas will be written in the separate notes. Everything will be there provided to you. You don't have to work hard. And coming to, if you are planning to go abroad, we also have study abroad program. You can go through my number. My number is on WhatsApp. My WhatsApp number is in the website. If you are planning to do masters abroad, that is a very good choice. It is better than doing masters in India. So if you are planning to go abroad, we will help you out right from the, from taking the passport to getting the visa, visa, US visa, right? So we will help you out in the entire process. Okay. So do visit the website, see what is happening there. Even DSA course is there for 5,000 rupees, which is both in Python and C++. Okay. So thank you so much.